Our scripture for this morning is Matthew chapter 28 and verses 5 and 6. And the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. You know, it's truly amazing to me uh, how every year you can read the story of the resurrection, and every year there's something new that, that seems to stand out and something fresh to glean from the resurrection story. Uh, and, and this year was no exception to that for me. Uh, as I read over the scriptures of the resurrection, especially from here in Matthew, um, there were there was this phrase that, that jumped out at me. Actually, there were two phrases, uh, and we'll talk about one now and, and the other later in our, in our regular service. But this phrase uh, that we're going to speak of this morning, we've actually we mentioned just a few weeks ago as we talked about the woman at the well. Um, and we've seen it at other times also. But we find these women returning here early in the morning um, to the tomb here this first day of the week, much like we've gathered here early this morning. Um, they went there to take spices to anoint the body of Jesus. They went there um, to find Jesus lying there in the grave, of course. They went there wondering, as other accounts tell us, how in the world they were going to move this stone uh, in from in front of the grave, not counting on these soldiers to help them out in any way. But when they got there, they found that something strange uh, was going to be taking place, or something strange happened as they arrived there. You see, on their arrival, Matthew says, a violent earthquake takes place. And not your everyday run-of-the-mill earthquake. You may not be uh, accustomed to earthquakes around here. Uh, where I come from in, in Kentucky, we are along a little bit of a fault line up in there, and so we would have a little tremors every once in a while, not like California folks are used to or anything, but uh, every now and then we'd have a little tremor. Uh, and I don't know if it was like that or not, or if it was a big massive earthquake, but one way or another, we're told that a, a violent earthquake takes place. But this one comes as a result of this angel coming down from heaven. And in the presence of these women and in the presence of these Roman soldiers, this angel rolls away the stone that was covering the tomb. I, can you just imagine this scene, how this must have looked for all of those involved. And it had to be very frightening uh, for, for them all. In fact, it tells us that, that the, the guards were so frightened that they, they passed out in fear. They looked like dead men there at the grave. But I want you to see that the angels comforted the women. In fact, notice that the women evidently were tougher than those old killing machine uh, Roman soldiers, right? They passed out. The women uh, stood strong and were able to observe all of this. And they were comforted by the angel. And hearing those comforting words, do not be afraid. You know, a lot of times when we're told do not be afraid, it may not always help us to not be afraid, but it is comforting to hear those words, isn't it? And so they hear those words here from this angel. I'm sure they're still quite a bit frightened, but they, they hear those comforting words. But that's not all he has to say, for he goes on to say, I know what you're doing here. I know you're here looking for Jesus, but he is not here. He is risen. You see, they came that day expecting to find a body to anoint there with with the spices. Well, they had forgotten that multiple times he had told them that on the third day he would rise again. 
He did tell them that multiple times. But the angel tells them, just as he said, just as he told you, he is not here. He has risen. But here's the phrase that comes that that stands out for me. The angel invites them in. He says, come and see. Come and see the place that he lay, where he lay. They were invited not just to, to take the angel's word for it here that he had risen, but to come on in and see for yourself that the grave is indeed empty this morning. Come and see that he's no longer here. Come and see that he's risen just as he said he would. And in these words, come and see, we find that invitation to let their grief turn into joy on that morning. We find the invitation to let their mourning turn into excitement. We find the invitation to, to, to turn the opportunity of fear to turn into the opportunity for worship. You see, they, they came here uh, ready for a burial procedure. They left running to tell others what they had seen and heard. Even though they were afraid of all that was going on in this place this morning, they left here ready to tell others. And as they left ready to tell others, they met Jesus. Jesus came and stood right there among them, and they worshipped him there. It's a simple invitation that's extended to all of us. It's extended to them, and it's an invitation that they find joy and gladness and worship in. They find the boldness to proclaim what they have seen and what they have heard. And it's extended to all others, this very same invitation to come and to see. They go and tell the disciples, come and see. The disciples go on out. And tell others, come and see. You know, I was flipping back through the scriptures to see all of the instances of this same same phrase, this same invitation that's given. And the first instance is, is when uh, John's disciples are, are meeting Jesus for the first time, it seems. And, and they ask Jesus, where are you staying? It's a simple question, really. But, but Jesus just says, come and see. Come and see. And that begins for them a, a, a journey that they'll never forget, right? As they begin to follow him. And then very soon after, one of those disciples goes and finds his friend. And he says, come and see the one who come that Moses told about. Come and see this man called Jesus. And his whole world was changed when he did, when he accepted that invitation. We mentioned already the woman at the well who, when she heard those words of life, she went back into the town and invited all that she could find. Come and see a man who told me all I ever did. And those town people responded and they came and they saw and they believed. But do you know the last instance of this phrase that, that I could find? It's there in John, and, and it's uh, the people of, of Bethany telling Jesus to come and see, actually. It's, it's Jesus' friend Lazarus has just passed away, and Jesus sees all the people mourning, and he asks them, where have you laid him? Where have you buried him? And they say, come and see. Come and see where he lay. You see, Jesus had been invited to come and see a dead man. But he called him forth out of a grave that day. Now we've got these women here. They're also coming to expecting to find a dead man. But when they were invited to come and see, they found an empty grave. They found that Jesus overcame Death By this same invitation, the same invitation to come and see, we're also made aware that by rising from the grave, we are given new life in Christ Jesus. 
There's so much packed into this one simple phrase, to come and see. This one simple invitation to come and see. All because that tomb was empty on that morning. All because he rose from the grave. But there's just one more point to make about this statement. I want you to see that after we come, after we answer that call to come and to see, it's our duty to then turn to others and invite them to do the same. You see, the angel invited the women to come and to see. And actually, he says there, uh, when he gives them the message that he, he's supposed to give, he says, now I've told you, I've done my duty. Now that I've, I've given you the words that I've been told to give you, I've done what I'm supposed to do. Now you go and do what you're supposed to do with it. We have been given the same invitation, and we're charged to do the same to others. Invite them also to come and see. The women went to the disciples, told them, invited them to come. The disciples later invited more and more to come and see the one who could save. That's worked its way all the way down to you and I. And that's why we sit here early on a Sunday morning today, right? Because someone invited us to come and see a Savior. And so what do we do with it? We go from this place and invite someone else to come and see. Come and see the risen Lord. Come and see a risen Savior. Come and see someone who turns grief to joy. Turns mourning into excitement. Turns fear into worship. Come and see what God has done for you through Christ our Lord. Come and see your Savior. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for what you have done for us through Christ our Lord. And we're so thankful for that simple invitation to come and see an empty grave, empty on our behalf, signifying life anew. Lord, we give you praise today. May we have boldness like these women to then go out and invite others to come and see what you have done for us. Lord, we praise you in Christ's name.